קודם. Yeah. Ah, okay, all right. Do you start recording? Yes, you're good to go. Ah, okay, yeah, so, so thank you very much. Um, today, um, we're gonna talk about uh, chapter 15 factors. And so I'm Shamsuddin Muhammad. And um, this is what the chapter contains. So basically today chapter is a little bit like um, very uh, small, uh, unfortunately, it's a little described, but it's small. I have not done the exercises in it because, yeah. So uh, it's basically about three things creating factors and how to modify factor order or a given factor and how to uh, modify in factor. No, okay. Uh, I did some kind of repetition here. So this is not the uh, repetition, it's changing the level, changing the uh, level rather than modification we can even totally change the factor levels so it's three things that we're going to see how to create a factor and how to modify a given factor order and how to change it all right so what factor are so basically uh we know the vectors and uh, uh they are atomic atomic uh variables so uh under atomic vectors we have different things we have logical, we have numeric, we have character. All of these things are atomic vectors. So we say that F3 vector types in base are, they are special, this one, factor, date, and process, and date and time. So as you can see here, factor is a kind of an integer rather than a, under character. So this is one of the things, uh, that the really uh, issue with factor in the sense that um, it is a string, but internally it is represented as an integer. So they may mention this is a really uh, advantage in the sense that um, since factor is represented as an integer, so no matter how length the factor is, the string, it will be represented uh, uh, using integer, which it means it will not take a lot of memory space. So. That is what factors are, they are S3 vectors. So, uh, because um, there is a kind of frustration of using factors. So, uh, in R, base R before this time, when we import factors and uh, there is default structure which says strings as factor is supposed to zero, which gives many frustrations to people. And as you can see, many tweet, even Hadley, he was uh, very uh, concerned about how it might, how it changed softly, how it causes frustration. So you can see how people are tweeting about it. Not only Hadley we come, but uh, right now, as you can see in this slide, they say that with the growth and the success of R, there are many challenges that we should be solved. A language, challenge, a language change that may happen. So this is one of the really challenge in R, as you can see here from this slide. But as of today, string as factors becomes fault by default in R. So there are many frustrations in which you read a vector and it automatically said that as true to a factor and you don't expect your whatever you read to be a factor. So uh, all these frustrations are now history because in R version 4.0, string as factor is false. So that is that for that. So this is a little bit history about what is really happening behind the scene. So why factors? So uh, because obviously we have string, why do we create factors? Why do we need them? We can create something like this as a string, I mean, character vector, because it's obviously, but there is a problem with that. Using string to store all the character variable has problem, which is, for example, one of them is sorting. For instance, if we have this, with this, we have this, this, and this, and we try to sort this, you can see that it sort this, not in the way we expect, because this character, are ordered sequence of characters. So it 
sequence them in a fashion that we are not interested in. So the solution is to use factors. So factors allow us to actually create all the string with what we call levels. So for us to create factors, uh, we use what is called a function factors or fast factor. So these two things function are used to create factor. So let's see how we create factor number one. So to create a factor, given these levels, we have these levels and uh, we can create a factor using this. We can say factor with levels, with days, and we specify the levels. So it means when you want to create a factor, you need two things. You need to use a function, which is called factor, and at the same time, so you need to provide the levels you want your factor to take. And if you remember this week days, is this what we have here? And uh, the level is here, we weeks level, we specify our level. So the level is expected to be in this from Monday to Tuesday, Wednesday, third. So this is the order we expect our, our factor to have. So in this sense, we define here a factor called weak factor, and this is it. So if you look at this here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so these strings is ordered. Or like in the previous case, where the string is not ordered because we just it's just a string. Yeah, oh, here. So that is the uh, uh, creating factors. And again, there is an issue if you have non-valid levels. When you have a non-valid levels, using these factor, that level will be written as NA. So if you look at this here, we have Monday, Tuesday, but this is wrongly misspelled, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But this Tuesday is not within the level specified in week levels because this should be Tuesday, not this. So in that case, uh, we have NA. So this is uh, really useful in the sense that it will show you you have NA instead of uh, going and make some kind of uh, analysis with something which is wrong. The next thing is uh, when you omit the levels here, as we said, for us to create a factor, we always need to provide the vector and the levels we want. But whenever you omit the levels, it will automatically take the order from the data in alphabetical order. So it will assume whenever you do not specify the level, it will assume you want to this order alphabetically. So F will come first. Uh, then M and stuff like that. So if you look at this, we have this Friday, Monday. Till, so there are different ways in different uh, scenarios that you may wish to create your factor. So let's move on to the next one, which is uh, we use pass factor. So this is basically a way in which you prefer to create your factor, but you want R uh, to prompt you that you have an error whenever it occurs. So it's basically the same thing with the previous only factor, but the only difference is that this is passing an error whenever it occurs. So if you look at this, this is something, but it's throwing a warning that there is a failure. So that is uh, pass as a factor, what it does. The next thing is um, uh, other approaches of creating a factor. So, uh, one way is if you prepare the order of level match the order of the first appearance in the data set. So we use what is called unique. So for instance, uh, if in our data set, we want the order to be, for instance, we have some kind of repetition. So we want to order to be this, the first one it appears. So we use unique X. So it doesn't have any repetition. So even if we have another Mondays here, it will not take that into consideration. So in that case, we use uh, the same thing factor, but instead here to give the levels, to give the levels, no, we say unique. It means we use unique 
character values inside these levels. Another way is to use this way in which we provide the factor after creating the factor and we set FCT, uh, FCT in order. So these are two different ways in which uh, you create a factor, but only the levels has unique identifier in it. Without that uniqueness, like here where we create a pass factor or we only use a factor, you may have some kind of, if you have some kind of repetition within the levels, then your factor will have such. But in this case, you don't need any repetition. So you want unique levels. So that's the approach, uh, other ways to do that. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is, when you have an existing factor, you may wish sometimes to find the levels so that you can uh, find out what is really going in. So the simple thing to find the levels of factor is when that factor is a vector. So here we have, our, uh, our, we have our factor created here with the levels which are unique. For us to find those levels, we just see levels here. So you can see it arranges the levels for this particular factor. But what about if the factor is in a table? For instance, here we have a data set that we're going to use, which is this. But uh, uh, this data set, when you have when you call it sometimes you may see that uh, the levels if you have very large data set you may see that the levels may start from the first variable to the 1000 variable they have the same level so when you scroll to see the levels it you you find it difficult to see what are the complete number of levels uh, for that factor so in that way, the easiest way to find the levels of any factor in table, no matter how large the tables are, you can use this to count the, for instance, our data set here, uh, uh, presumably, the rest is a factor level. So when we count that, we can see these are the various factors. I don't know why this slide goes down. These are the various factors. So this is one way to, find the levels of a uh, factor levels in a table. Another way which is also easier is to use the bar chart to find the level of a factor. Uh, as we can see here, this is our data and this is the factor and I want call this, oh God, here we can also see the factor. So these are the uh, levels here, we see them down if this, this thing really goes down. So that is it. Uh, the next thing we're gonna see is how we can order a factor. So as we said, this chapter is very small. It consists of the first thing is creating a factor, which we have just seen, and how to order factor. That's the second one. So in the previous cases, we have seen how to create a factor where you can use only factor or pass factor, where you can also use unique and the rest. Now, one important thing that really affect also plotting in ggplot is order of factor because ggplot takes the order of factor you have and plot them. So this is a particular case in which we have our data sets, as you can see here, and they are grouped by this, and we have this and this, and we try to plot it. So here you can see, this is the data set here, and we have this and region here, and we plot it. So what they're saying here is that uh, this data, the presentation is a little bit confusing. I mean, difficult, not easy to interpret because there isn't any uh, clear pattern to do that. So we can order this factor, which is region, by some kind of thing here or anything we feel like. 
as you can see here. So for us to do that, to modify the order, we use what is called FC the order. So you can see here we have our factor and uh, the variable we want to reorder with is TV hours. So this is a variable in which it has allow us to order this factor. And uh, as you can see here, when we really order it, our plot is somehow more interpretable and approachable. So that is um, factor uh, reorder. Again, we can use for this one. Yeah. So we can use scatter plot. If you can see here, we use scatter plot to do that. So what about uh, bar plot? What can we do that? So in bar plot, we use FCT impact to order levels in increasing frequency. So unlike in scatter plot, where we use FCT to order to do that. Here in bar plot, what we are interested sometimes is to show some kind of uh, increasing level based on frequency. So as you can see here, we have this and uh, we use this. This is our, this is our category, I mean, uh, factor. And this with this function, we are telling this to order this in increasing frequency. But you can see here, start with high, then next one and last one. So we can use this FCT reverse to reverse the order in which it starts with small and continue in increasing order. As oh god, okay. So. Uh, Oh, my, my plot is, <laughs> I didn't put it, I think in the, uh, yeah, all right. So if, if you can see here, we use only FCT uh, in pre to generate this. But if we want to reverse it to start with small and it continue increasing, we can add this FCT reverse as well, which is here. Um, so I didn't float it correctly. So that is, how to reorder factor using scatter plots and using bar plot. So using scatter plot, which we use uh, FCT the order, which we obviously know that one. And uh, this is actually the one that I've been, been using FCT frequent. So it's used to reorder factor in actually increasing or frequency. So this is the last one. Yes. Uh, I have a quick question. So this is my first time actually to see this kind of um, uh, what I would call nested pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, uh, do we have Marito as a factor as a factor variable already? Yeah, or which one? Marito. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's already yes. a factor variable. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. It's factor variable. Okay, okay. okay. I understand the trick now. Yeah. So if we use this FCT reverse here, again, like mm. this one here, like this FCT reverse. So it will change, I think, let's see. I think, um, where is this? Uh, okay. Yeah, I think this is, oh. So, yeah. Hmm. So you can see that it actually changes the issue from the uh, previous settings to this settings. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, that's that for uh, ordering factor. So what we're gonna see here, the next one is 
modifying factor levels. So we have seen how to create a factor. We have seen how to reorder factor using FCT, reorder or FCT uh, infrequent. The last one is modifying the factor levels. You can see here, one way that we said you can find the levels of factor is using count, right? So here we are trying to find the whole levels of the factor, this factor, uh, party ID here. So you can see here we have different factors, different levels, I mean. But the levels are somehow inconsistent. What we mean by inconsistent, you can see here. So we have strong Republican, not, not strong Republican. We have independence, this, not, and we have this independent, we have this, no strong. So one way is for us to modify the levels so that they can look like um, more approachable in the sense that uh, when you see them, you can easily understand what they mean. So to do that, the base function to modify or change the name of, or change the level name is to FCT record. So if we look at this, the first one here, strong Republican, we can change it to Republican strong. Not strong Republican, we can study this Republican weak. Independent this, independent this, this to this, not strong Democrat, Democrat weak, strong. De so this is just a way in which you want to, maybe you are given some kind of levels for your factor and you feel like this level doesn't actually really make sense to you and you want to change the names of those levels for that factor so to do that we use fct code you can see here this is the correct i mean this is the factor uh, variable so we use fct code we put the factor variable and we use this and uh, you can see here As you can see here, it makes more appealing to read. I mean, yeah, Republican strong, okay, Republican weak, independent, you know, you know what I mean? So you can see here, it changes the way in which the levels are named. So in a nutshell, modifying factor levels is just changing the names of levels to something more approachable, something more easy to understand. Sometimes, you may not need only to change the names, but rather you want to collapse, for instance, you want to combine these and these three levels to one level. That is to collapse level to one, or to collapse three levels to three, stuff like that. So in that case, that is where you have FCT collapse. So here, as you can see here, the same thing we have, uh, this, if you look at this, we say mutate, but this is the same, factor level that we are uh, creating. So here, if you look at it here, it means, are we overriding the current because it's the same thing, the same name, factor level, are we overriding it? Because in the data set days, we already have this variable, you know what I mean? Which is factor. Yeah. And we want to, do collapsing. I mean, in also the same case here where we do the modification. So we are overriding it. We are using you method, but we are not creating another variable party ID. We have existing one. So here we have this, and we provide the way it is here, and we provide the call. I mean, the levels we want to collapse here. So we are collapsing all this one to other. We are collapsing this, this to rep and stuff like this. So here we can see we have only these uh, levels because we have already uh, uh, collapsed all others. So this is also uh, useful in a sense that when you find out some levels 
uh, basically uh, nonsensical in the sense that they mean the same thing. So you can match many of them to have a single uh, 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 levels. And the next thing is uh, lump groups. So we have another thing that's called lump groups. So here, what we are doing, uh, yeah, so here is another one called lumps group where we actually lumps particular groups. Everything is together. So in this case, we have, uh, uh, we have this religion, which is also a factor, but we want to have some kind of, uh, because this religion is a factor, it has many levels. It's not up to 10 here, as you can see here, but uh, we want to lump some of them together. So here we see FCT lump, we provide the factor and we said, how many do we want to lump? So we say 10 here. So you can see here we have, we lump them here and uh, we have, we saw them here. So this 10 we have here is not telling us we lump the, uh, we lump the, 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 the character uh, factor to 10. Okay, good, good, continue. So here, oh, uh, here we have 10. I'm a bit confused here. So I thought before here, the end here we provided here, we lump the first 10 to protest them. No, okay. So I think when we lump them, it automatically group them, the levels into 10 and lump together. I'm not quite sure. Can someone jump in? Yeah, basically it takes the top 10 or yeah. top nine uh, factors and everything else is then lumped together into other. Oh, what, do I, we don't have the other here, is it not? It's not number five. five, number five. Ah, oh, okay, yes, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so because uh, there is another example that Hadley gave and which say he said it doesn't make sense. Uh, so this is the, I mean, the typical way in which if one wants to actually lump many factors to one, uh, to them, so we take, okay, good, good. Yeah, so here we have this one. So I think um, this is my last slide. Unfortunately, I've not tried to do the exercise because today I have like, my daughter disturbing me. So yeah, I was able to uh, prepare the slide anyway. And that is that for that. So any question? Nice. I've learned a few things actually. <laughs> Uh, so Ruth, any question? No, that made sense. Thank you. All right, have a. No, none for me either. I was all very clear. Okay, all right, great. So thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, today, here yeah, I have some kind of disturbance. I'm sorry for that. Slide two. Yeah. Please. Okay, all right, thank new, you. New uh, member of the book club. Twice. Yeah? <laughs> new member of the book club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So I think I can stop sharing from now. Thank you.